Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of the Auto Game Maker CSS course. Previously we covered properties, today we are going to cover pseudo classes which sound scary but are actually pretty simple once you get familiar with them. We are going to use pseudo classes to make our game a lot more interactive, fix a lot of graphical details and oversights that were present previously, visually separate owned, affordable and unaffordable upgrades and overall improve on the consistency of our style sheet. Uh, so before we begin, let's first recap what we have learned because it's going to be important. So you should already know that classes and identifiers are selectors, which means they select specific elements for styling or positioning with properties. And the main difference between classes and identifiers is, you guessed it, classes can select multiple or groups of elements at the same time. Meanwhile, identifiers only select a single and unique element. Uh, but, you know, why are we recapping what we have learned? Well, it's for the reason that pseudo classes are used with selectors. Or more specifically, in Idle Game Maker, they are used with classes and identifiers. This just means that without understanding selectors, you cannot understand pseudo classes. So if you haven't watched episode 2 of the course yet, now would be a good time to watch it and then come back once you have learned about classes and identifiers in detail. But if you have, well, then we can hopefully continue without any issues. So first of all, pseudo classes are keywords used with selectors that add conditions to them. This means that elements selected with the selector are only styled when some condition is met. That probably sounds confusing at first, but really you can just think of pseudo classes as the if statements of CSS. Each pseudo class sets a different condition that needs to be met in order for the selected elements to go through with the styling and a list of all of them can be found in the description. I understand it can be a little hard to wrap your head around all of this at first, so I wanted to show you an in-game example of a pseudo class in action, and that one is the hover pseudo class. So currently in our game, whenever we hover over something with our cursor, its color gets changed to a light blue, as you can see here with the buildings. And the reason why this happens is because inside the big blue style sheet, which our game uses, there is a dot think class with the hover pseudo class attached. Now the dot think class selects all things inside of our game, and the hover pseudo class makes it so the class only styles the elements with its properties when the player's cursor is hovered over them. In this case, once the player's cursor is over something, it sets its background color to a light blue using the 6CF hexadecimal color code. So if we were to change this color value to something like goldenrod instead, you can see that when we now hover over something in our game, it is no longer blue but instead is a fitting light yellow color. With that said, let's quickly just overview the syntax of pseudo classes, which is really simple. You just append them to some class using a colon like this. So in this example, the hover class it is attached to the think class. We'll get to styling our own game soon, but one last very important thing I want to tell you about is combined selectors. Using combined selectors, you can select elements that need to have multiple classes attached at the same time in order to be styled. And this is done by combining selectors together, most likely classes. For example, right here in our style sheet code, we can see a combined selector dot thing dot can afford. This combined selector selects elements that have both the thing class and the can afford class attached, which is a built-in idle game maker class that is automatically attached to all things that the player cannot afford. Uh, you can see that it just sets the opacity to 0.65 at the moment, so it makes unaffordable things transparent, but you could change this however you want. I also want to mention that you can attach pseudo classes to combine selectors as well. Like in this example here, the hover pseudo class is attached to the dot upgrade dot can afford combined selector. And this just means that when you hover over an unaffordable upgrade in your game, it changes the box shadow a little bit, right? But once again, you could customize this however you want. You could, for example, change the color to be red or even change the width and height. In code, you might sometimes come across things like this as well, where selectors are separated by a single comma. This is really just to save space in your code, since this just means that when they are separated by a comma, they have the exact same properties. This little piece of code here means that both owned upgrades and owned achievements will have a light blue background, which is actually an issue that we will need to fix later on in the video. With those things said, I wanted to also show you the website, which is linked in the description as well, uh, that contains most CSS pseudo classes. So once you click on the link, you should be around here. And when you scroll all the way down, this is where you can find a list of all CSS pseudo classes. Some of them are a bit more advanced, but a very important disclaimer is that input selector pseudo classes are unusable 
with Idle Game Maker. Those are, for example, these, these, right? So in range, invalid, they are unusable with Idle Game Maker as they are only able to select input fields for which we need full control over HTML in order to be able to add them. Control that we unfortunately do not have with Idle Game Maker. So basically, if uh, in this example row, if there is an input here as the selector, just know that it cannot be used with Idle Game Maker. Either way, you can click on each of the pseudo classes listed here to read more about them. For example, let's click on the last of type pseudo class. And in order to more properly understand them, you can also click the try it yourself button where you can customize and play around with the properties and the usage of the pseudo class. And what the last of type of pseudo class does is that if you are selecting a group of elements with this pseudo class, it only selects the last type of that selector group. This probably sounds a little confusing, but really it just means that you could, for example, dynamically style the last upgrade in your game differently from the rest to make your game's experience just that bit more interesting. So just to sort of demonstrate this, in uh, this try yourself window, we have the P element selected, which in HTML terms just stands for paragraph. We cannot actually add paragraphs in our game maker since we do not have access to HTML, uh, but this P selector could very well be, for example, an upgrade class or a building class. Let's add two more paragraphs. Let's change this to be the fifth paragraph and the sixth one. And now when we click run, you can see that it automatically selected the last of its type, right? The sixth paragraph to style. All right, that was quite a bunch of information I just dumped on you, most of which you likely don't at all understand yet, but that's completely fine. For this reason, let's dedicate the next half of this video to purely coding and styling our game using pseudo classes so that you get used to the process and hopefully some of it will stick to you and you will learn to independently use pseudo classes in your game on your own as well. Earlier on in the video, we have used the hover pseudo class with the things in our game to make it so when we hover over them, they turn a light yellow instead of a light blue fit within the golden style of our game. This however is still an issue with our own upgrades and this is the first thing I'd like to address because let's face it, our own upgrades at the moment look way out of place. The way I'm gonna fix this in our game is, well first of all I'm gonna right click on some kind of upgrade and then hit inspect element. And here we can see the dot upgrade dot owned combined selector, which sets the background of our owned upgrades to be this light shade of blue. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit special here because I want to visually separate our owned upgrades from our available ones, just to make sure that the player doesn't get confused over whether they have the available upgrades tab open or the owned upgrades tab open. And the way I'm going to do this, well, first of all, I'm going to change the background color of our owned upgrades to be something like a dark green, since usually in games, green... Uh, signifies ownership then another thing this border here looks a bit out of place so i think if we change the border color to be something uh, of a lighter shade of green like lime would look very good and honestly this already looks acceptable right we can definitely clearly see the difference between our owned upgrades and our available upgrades but remember we have learned about pseudo classes in this episode so what pseudo class could be used to make our own upgrades look even better. To make them a bit more interactive, let's use the hover pseudo class, which we can also use with combined selectors. That's an important piece of information to remember. So if we were to add the dot upgrade dot owned and attach the hover pseudo class to this combined selector, and then we changed the background color on hover to be, well, some kind of different shade of green, say something in between lime and that dark green we have. That's a bit too bright. I think a bit darker would look nice. There we go, probably a little bit lighter. Okay, yeah, I'm honestly pretty happy with this. And you can see that when we hover over our own upgrades, they turn a lovely little lighter shade of green. You could go however crazy you want with the styling of this. You could, for example, make them glow on hover as well using box shadows. I'm just going to leave them as is. Okay, so this is all fine and great, but you mustn't forget that the changes we have made here are only made in the inspect element window. This means that if we hit refresh, they won't be saved, which means we have to copy and paste our changes into our CSS code. So let's find the .upgrade.owned. There we go. We have changed that successfully. And let's also add the .upgrade.owned hover into our style sheet as well by just copy and pasting it like so. Right. And now when we just drag and drop our style sheet into file garden again to save our changes and then hit refresh on our game, 
we can see that our changes have successfully been saved and no matter how many times we refresh they will not go back to being that ugly blue color the difference between owned and available upgrades is definitely readily apparent uh, the second thing that I'd like to change in my game is a bit more of a detail that the player might not notice, but I think it is the details that make a game look great using CSS. Basically, I want to make it so when we hover over any type of thing in our game, the border style gets changed from this dashed style into the solid style. Let's quickly click on some kind of thing, for example a building, hit inspect element, and I'll just quickly show you how this can be done since it is just a single line of code. So once we're here, let's just click on this button, which is just a toggle element state button where we can toggle this building state to be in a hover state. And this will then uncover this piece of code, which we need in order to style our things when we hover over them. So let's uh, add the border style solid property into the dot thing hover class. And this means that whenever we hover over some kind of thing, its border style gets changed to a solid style. As you can see, whenever we hover over any kind of thing, even an known upgrade, its border gets changed to a solid one. So after we have done that, all we have to do is copy this property and then let's add it to our style sheet in order to save it. So we can see that it's right here. We can just add the border style solid. And now when we save our changes, we can see that uh, whenever we hover over any type of thing in our game, the border style gets changed to a solid one, which I think just looks plenty more interesting and adds a little bit of oomph into our game. But now I have noticed an unwanted side effect of implementing this feature. Our main coin button gets a border around it as well. It's a bummer, but this is a very informative moment for you as well, because when you're going to be styling your game, you are bound to run into a bunch of bugs that you will need to fix. So how do we go about fixing a bug like this? Well, first of all, it's important to realize why it happens in the first place when you come across a bug like this. The reason why our button gets a solid border around it when we hover over it with our cursor is because the button itself is a type of thing with the dot thing class attached and with the use of the hover pseudo class combined with the dot thing class, we made it so all types of things get a solid border around them on a cursor. Hover. This of course includes the button. So in order to fix this, let's right click the big button hit inspect element and add the hover pseudo class to this combined selector here and i'll explain why in just a second after i do it let's copy and paste uh, this combined selector let's um, add it here with the hover class attached let's give it a border of none right and now it isn't happening all right let's now actually explain what actually happened here and why it is now fixed so why did we add a hover pseudo class to this seemingly random combined selector which is attached to the coin button and why did we set the border to be none well if you remember our button here has the big button class attached this combined selector just makes it so things with the big button class attached get these sets of properties yeah so we just added a uh, new selector that makes it so when you hover over things with the big button class attached in our case our button its border gets set to none. Essentially, this hover pseudo class here overrides the effects of the hover pseudo class that makes it so whenever we hover over some kind of thing, its border style gets changed to solid. Of course, however, do not forget to copy and paste this into your style sheet so that it gets saved when you refresh. I'm just gonna place it somewhere here and now when I upload my code to file garden it will save. With that bug fixed let's move on and the next thing I'm noticing which my design eye is not at all satisfied with is another small detail but our upgrades are looking a little odd because if you notice upgrades that we cannot afford have these rounded edges to them but upgrades that we can afford do not. Alright, but on a real note though, why should we care about small details like this? Because this does seem very minor. Well, it's because that details like these pile up. And while individually they may not seem like a big deal, improving on 5 or 10 or even 15 of these small types of details does create a very noticeable and pleasant difference when playing the game for the user. This is why I want you to get in the habit of improving on small details like these as well, because I feel like that is what separates great CSS from good CSS. And the fix for this is actually very, very simple. I'm not even going to bother opening inspect element for it, because inside of the .upgrade.can't afford combined selector, which just selects upgrades that we can't afford, 
there is the border radius property which has a value of 8 pixels which sets the well radius of the corners of the upgrades that we cannot afford to 8 pixels so now when we remove that our issue should be fixed the very last thing i want to implement to our game is to more clearly visually separate upgrades that the player can afford and that they cannot Currently, the only way that the player can distinguish between whether they can afford an upgrade or not is either by hovering over them, which is not very good, or by looking at them, you can see that the upgrades that you cannot afford are a bit more transparent. Either way, I don't feel like it's clear enough. So what I want to do is change the color of upgrades we cannot afford to be a dark red. Because in Idle Game Maker, red usually signifies that you cannot afford something, so I feel like it's only fitting and would look really good. So let's style them using inspect element. Let's click on an upgrade that we cannot afford. Hit inspect element. And here we can see the dot upgrade that can't afford by selector, which selects the upgrades that we can't afford. So let's give them a background color of some kind of shade of red. I feel like that's way too bright. So let's make it a bit darker. There we go. I think that this looks just right. Let's also give them a border color of some kind of shade of red. I think actually this neon red looks pretty good as with the owned upgrades let's give these the extra oomph as well by giving them a pseudo class so upgrade that we can't afford colon hover and when we hover over them let's make it so the background color oops not background but background is a bit lighter so let's have it be a bit of a lighter shade of red that's too bright Something like this. Right, I think that looks perfect. All right, so we are basically done with styling our upgrades that we cannot afford. But there is one more thing, and it's very sneaky that I'm noticing. It's another very small detail, and that is uh, that the box shadow of the upgrades that we cannot afford has a very ever so slightly blue glow to it. You can see it by this color right here. If we were to, for example, change it, right? Hopefully, you can see the difference. If you look over here, you can see how the glow is affecting the look of our unaffordable upgrades. So let's just change that to black to keep it consistent with the style of our upgrades. And we can see that it automatically displays it when we hover over them as well. So let's change that to black as well. There we go. Now our upgrades are actually perfect. And now all that we need to do is to save our changes by copying and pasting them inside of our code. So first let's copy and paste these changes right here. Hit copy, go into our style sheet paste them around here actually i think it would be better if we just replace them by going up here there we go replace that and now let's clean up our code a little bit now let's copy and paste the hover variant of this class once again let's go into our style sheet paste it instead of this but we also mustn't forget that we also have to copy and paste the box shadow of the hover variant so that the box shadow stays black and now that we saved our changes we can finally wrap this episode up it's been quite a long one if you've made it this far congratulations we have made a lot of progress on styling our game we have fixed a bunch of issues a bunch of bugs but most importantly hopefully you have learned a lot in this episode because it is quite a juicy one with that said thank you very much for watching this episode took longer than usual to edit and record so i'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe if you have any questions about anything covered in the video feel free to ask away in the comments i will make sure to respond to every single one i hope you found this tutorial useful in the next few episodes we will cover transitions inheritance relative and absolute positioning all that fun stuff so stay tuned for that I also wanted to thank you all for liking the first episode of the Playing Your Idol Game Maker game series uh, so much since it's my best performing video so far, which is honestly just crazy. And if you want, you know, to have your game featured in a video as well, uh, the submission form is in the description. Last but not least, if you really enjoy what I do here, feel free to check out my Patreon, where for only $2 a month, you can have your name featured in the outro of my videos. It also motivates me and makes me really happy. Of course, though, it's completely up to you. So, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.